Right, here we go, view two viewers. Brace yourselves for the return of the Mac. Or the Doris. Do you get me? He's coming back, you know. Yes, he is. They've had the wizard wheeze idea or wishy-washy up there. You know, the guy that no one voted for. And that Julia Hartley that lives above the brewery on Squawk TV. She always says, oh, well, you don't vote for the person, you vote for the party. If that was true, he would have never got in in 2019. So that's a load of old hooey. As I always say, the legacy media right, and the politicians, they're all on the same bean page. Yes, they rub each other's back, darlings. Yes, they do. And apparently the word on the street is apparently the Johnson of Doris is coming back. Yes, he is. I'm just waiting for somebody to make him a lord. I'm just surprised he hasn't been made one already. Uh, so there you go. Let's jump in and see what James O'Brien of LBC is rabbiting on about. Today that Boris Johnson is expected to campaign for the Conservatives Don't in red wall seats gold. before the general election after a thawing in relations. Right, now on the one hand, yes, James, yes. On the one hand, I think he should be made to go around all of the northern of Britain. Every town and city in Britain, he should be made. It should be like penance for him to go around and see the destruction, the abject misery and poverty in those areas. I'm telling you, <laughs> you won't get him round there. It's just nonsense. And to be fair, just the merest glimpse of his moosh would be enough to make people not wanting to vote for, well, him or anyone. The thing is, I've heard a lot about this reform and I've been saying, if you go back on my back catalogue, I've been saying for a long time now, they're a load of hooey, they're a put-up job. I mean, he's like, come all ye people, come all ye faithful unto my party. Oh, yes, it doesn't matter if you're left, right or somewhere in between. Join reform with Richard Bleeding Spice. Bleeding cretin he is. Uh, well, they come up before him every day of the week. He's there to split the vote. He's full of old hooey. And basically, all the Conservatives are after keeping their jobs, aren't they? Basically, that's where we are. Uh, the Boris Johnson, he's a raging narcissist, so they're... They always, he's like the Bobo doll, isn't he, old Doris? They bring him out, make him take a load of old shit. If it goes well, he'll get a few hallelujahs. If it goes wrong, well, it's all his bleeding fault. Um, obviously, it's a load of hooey. I can't see any, I mean, the graveyards are filled up during Boris Johnson's bleeding tenure when he shut down the whole bleeding country. I know my graveyard is. There was half of it that was completely empty. It's now full. So make of that what you will, darling. So that's just one little market bleeding town in darkest, deepest Sussex. Let's go. With Rishi Sunak. Um, Horrible I mean, piece of work. You can probably guess where I'm going with this. I don't, I've it got a clue. But I tell you what, Carrie would be there. Oh, Carrie, she'd be there. Yeah, oh, Carrie Johnson. <laughs> she'd be wearing it all the... Do you remember when she wanted Catherine Walker? to do her clothes or something that she couldn't because she was too busy doing Ka Catherine, the Princess of Wales clothes. Oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Carrie Johnson got all bent out of shape. <laughs> so funny. Questions rather than... Yes, hurry up, darling. I think you're slipping into a coma, sweetheart. You the space to share your thoughts. Can't keep me away because you're going. That brooks no debate, something that brooks no dissent, something right. that is objectively awful. right. So the Times claims that Stephen... Oh, he's a horrible Smith, piece of work, I agree. ...a very reliable reporter. He writes that Johnson allies... Yes. ...which pretty much means Johnson, and senior government sources... He's, he reminds me... Confirmed that I'll be that quiet. ...the former Prime Minister... Oh, God, you've done that now. ...play a significant right, shut role up. in the general election... Campaign. ...a significant role. He reminds me very much of Sadiqi Khan, where his feet are so happily and tightly, uncomfortably, under the table. He never has to make any effort... I was watching Sadiqi Khan answering questions to the London Forum, whatever it is he does. And you know how he is. He's a super silly ass, little bleed noik, can't really be bothered to answer all his bleed. The other people that are on there that are equally as important as him, all the councillors and everything. Oh, yes, I'm so much better than you. Giving up the world to live. You're all rather pathetic because guess what? I'm still going to be here long after you lot are dead. That's his attitude, and he reminds me of that as well, this one. His feet are so far under the table, he can't be bothered to put any energy into anything. And with him, if you are a lefty, what he says goes, he can fart in a jar and sell it, and it would, you know what I mean? People would buy it. Ridiculous. Anyway, go on, what are you going on about? We're still here with Boris Johnson. Oh, cabbage. And it... Focused my thoughts yeah. on something that had been bubbling... I like up. the way they've put that mic, actually. 
It does. Yes, it it's, uh, covers quite a lot of sins, doesn't it, that microphone? It's a bit like the candlestick holder in Westminster Abbey. Do you get me? Capish. You know, you know the one. Or Princess Anne's plume when she was cosplaying the D Duke of Wellington. Do you remember that? Oh, it was all fun. We did have a nice day that day. We did. It pissed hard all day. I mean, it wouldn't be British, would it, if it didn't piss hard all day? Oh, it was such a lot of fun. Yes, it was. Come on. Under the surface for a while with regards to right. Boris Johnson. Yes. And it's something quite surprising, actually. Oh. Forgive me, because I, I I know it's annoying sometimes. Uh, and no, you're annoying all the time, darling, but whatever. Do you know what I mean? Just crack on. Come sometimes on. I do it when I don't really need to. No, you don't need to hardly barely dial talk. Dial it down a little bit before. Do you know what I mean? I don't know why you don't learn sign language. And then you wouldn't have to talk. you just sit there and kind of lazily sign. And, you know, still probably make enough money to float a bleeding battleship every year. Go on. April when the paperback comes out. But Go on. In, my, in the book I've got out at the moment, there are oh, 10 chapter headings. There are 10 people that I consider to be most responsible for the breaking of Britain. Some of them right. are obvious and some right. of them are not. Right, OK, yes, yes. Boris Johnson yes. would be among the most obvious. Yes, right? he is. If you're looking at the state of the country. Now I'm listening to you now. Now we're simpatico. Because that arsehole... Well, Britain hasn't really got over the uh, lockdown, has it? It's gone downhill remarkably. I think mean, everything did kind of work, more or less, before the lockdown. But uh, between the lockdown and now, it's accelerated the decline of Britain, which trajectory has gone alarmingly downwards, darlings. By 2023, by the beginning of 2020. Whatever, go on. Boris Johnson is going to have his fingerprints all over. No, yeah, no. Listen, James, my plan's a better one. Make that monkey go up there. Make him go door to door and knock on people's door. Make him do living glad hand in in market squares in cities and towns around the north. Make him do it. Because I swear to God, he deserves it. He really does deserve it. He needs to go and see the poverty, the misery, the homelessness, the deprivation. And, oh, I'm sure they're all going to vote for a bleeding eaten kid, aren't they? Yes, they are that broke the bleeding country and partied like it was 1999 whilst we couldn't see our dying loved ones, whilst our loved ones were refused and denied treatment for terminal illnesses. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll tell you what I do. It's just as well I don't live up north because if he came knocking on my front door, I'd be chucking out my rubbish at exactly the same time. I'd be emptying my mop bucket. Yes, I would, all over him. Yes, I would, I wouldn't care. Coming down my front path, I'd be like that. Get off my land, I would. Yes, you bleeding peasant. Biggest problems that we are facing. But not only the, the reintroduction of racism into the mainstream of the Conservative Party and, of course, the removal oh, of... Oh, God. Listen, there's no racism in the Conservative Party per se. I know you like to stoke there up there is, that stoke it up that there is, there isn't. There isn't any racism really in the Labour Party. Again, you like to make out there is. There always has been, always will be, and is right now, classism. Basically, they don't care about the little people. If you're mauve from the planet Jupiter and you've got a couple of quid, you're in. Okay, apart from that, they don't care. They don't care what colour you are, what creed you are, what country you come from, what language, what God you bleed worship. They don't care about any of that. OK, you're either accepted because you've got some dosh or you're not accepted. That's the way they roll. And anything else is just hooey. They don't relate to you and you don't relate to them. Conservative Party, two of whom are, of course, among the only Tories today to come out. And I mean, you can just shut up a minute, man. Uh, it just goes to show how disconnected they are because whoever came up with the idea of, oh, how are we going to win the Red Walls up north? Oh, I know. I know. I've got a whiz of wheeze. I've got a really brilliant idea. What we do is we get Doris out of the time and send him up. Oh, everyone will vote for us once they see Doris. Really? Really? It's not bloody 2010 anymore, my darlings. He's absolutely wrecked the country. He is, well, he's like pinning the tail on the donkey, old Doris, isn't he? Yes, there was a lot of other people, but they only got away with what they did because he was in power. And to say he was lethargic is to understate the matter, isn't it, really? Come on. Racism ...of Frank Hester, but, mm. but also the madness of Brexit, the yeah. complete delinquency. Oh, shut up, don't go on about Brexit because I've literally given up the will to live about that. I mean, his leadership was a laissez-faire at the very least, wasn't it? Uh, well, say laissez-faire, it was basically he was always getting his missus knocked up. Well, the rest of us were being told to wear a mask in the shower. And if you go swimming in the sea to put a mask on. And if you want to have sex with your intimate uh, partner, to do it back to back wearing masks. I mean, I've never really got over that one. I still haven't. I couldn't get under it or over it. 
I've got no idea. Even, do you know what I mean? If you actually sit and think about that for a minute, how does that work, people? How does that work? Just as well I've got a sense of humour, you know? It was about 100 odd degrees, they're coming on every night with the three bleeding horsemen of the apocalypse, coming out with the most trite load of old crap you've ever heard in your life. It's got, and it's all been proved bollocks since then, hasn't it? Excuse my B word, F bomb, B words, or B bomb, yeah? Excuse the fact that, well, it, expletive is the only way to express what I feel about it. I knew at the time it was a load of who, and I'm sure most of you did. Just a load of nonsense. And then, of course, all the photographs came out. And meanwhile, there was children that were on the at-risk register being beaten to death. Oh, it's not Doris's fault. It's nothing to do with Doris. All the old people going mad all on their own. People that are terminally ill deny. Oh, it's people at funerals. You weren't allowed to go to funeral. And if you did, you weren't allowed to approach the coffin. You had to sit. Even if you saw someone crying, you weren't allowed to put your arm around them. No, in case they got a cough. I've just had a virus that was 10 times virus and worse a virus than the one I had in uh, 2020. Because I had it just as they shut down. Do you know what I mean? It was like when the rich people come back from Christmas from their skiing holidays and their Barbadian getaways. And they came back and they probably all brought it back with them. We'd all bloody had it. We'd had it all over that Christmas. Most of us working class people just had to get on with it. Didn't worry about us. Oh, no, still got to get about your business. I've never worked so hard. Once they bleed, shut everybody down, all the posh people up in London. They were all on the... They were Skyping me, they were. They were doom calling me, willy-nilly. Yes, I was inundated, my darlings. Yes, with people like him as well. And that's... What's her name? Faye bleeding surly off your sly news, lazy bin. She was crying salty tears. Took me about a fortnight to get all the salt out of her acts of instant it did. Because uh, she went at a party. I think it was about her 90th birthday or something. And her being her, sat on there squawking every day saying, oh, well, you shouldn't go out, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, you must do it. When it was her 90th, oh, she went out of the town. Yeah, she had a, a pub crawl with her and her little middle class, snobby little bleeding cronies. Oh, yeah. And then she got laid off by Sly News. Well, that was Gert, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. I was up to me elbows for months with her. Bleeding characters. Sound for anything or anybody. I can see it coming. Itself, the obvious and, and egregious proof that Boris Johnson's interests extend no further than the end of Boris Johnson's note. Now, that I do agree with. Now, that I do agree with. But I also think there's probably some codicile that Rishi Washi's given him. Get yourself out. Get yourself around up north, because if we go up there, we're going to get bleeding. We'll probably get, well, rolls and tomatoes thrown at us, you know? So you get up there, because they love you a lot more than us. Well, they don't. Nobody does. He's an a-hole. He should just stay where he is in retirement. But if anybody is going to have to pay penance, for, make him go up and look around the northern towns. Make him see what he's done to the cities and the towns up the north and around the sea seaside towns and the fishing industry and everything else he sold off. Bleen cretin. Oh, dear. Get off your soapbox, girl. Anyway, I think we're over this. Uh, the catastrophe of his COVID handling. The, oh, the, the disaster. Catastrophe. Was, bringing Dominic it was Cummings. bloody Armageddon. And Dominic bling comings and goings. I, uh, well, I couldn't see properly, so what I thought I'd do, I'd drive the entire length of the M4 with my kids and my wife in the car to test my eyesight. The, any of us had said that, police would be knocking on your bleeding door. Well, to be fair, no, actually, nowadays probably not. No, but you sent a dodgy tweet. Yes, they'd be rounding up, they'd be rounding a meat wagon, you know, to round you up, twist you up, take you off. But apart from that, I mean, I've been in places where they just go in nowadays and just empty the bleeding shop. I'm like, there, I only went in to buy some milk. There isn't any. They've emptied the bleeding shop. Nothing happens. They don't even bother reporting it to the police. No point. God almighty, that man. Right, let's go. Cummings into the heart of government. The, go to hell in the handcart, the, darling. The circumstances of his departure from the House of Commons are mm. almost unbelievable oh. in, their, uh, in their corruption. You know? To be he, honest, he, I he think went... he is the elite's Bobo doll. I think he always has been. Uh, they, Boris Johnson is always sort of spoken about as a tongue-in-cheek character. Uh, there's been other people like him throughout history that they've just put up every now and again. And he's one of them. Um, there was another one as well that used to get treated quite like that up until he took over the coalition government in the Second World War. And I won't say his name because it might cause constipations. I don't want to do that. But he was a bit the same. He used to take the shit all the time. But actually, when push came to shove, unlike Boris, yeah, he stood stood up to the plate. He stepped up and he did sort shit out, yeah. But before that, he was always like Boris. He was the Bobo doll, the posh kid, you know, that was destined to be leader. That all the other sort of management elite people thought, yeah, well, not really. 
But cometh the hour, cometh the man. They let him be leader of the coalition party during the war. And he won through, didn't he, darlings? Unlike Boris. And the funny thing is, Boris writes books about that man because he thinks he's like him, but he ain't. I'm not going to say his name. Went There's no way he, he was is. found by a committee of his peers, featuring a majority of Conservative MPs, to have lied to the House of Commons. He lies. He lies he every day. About lying. He couldn't them. lie straight in bed, that bloke. I'd start with the size of him. I can't even imagine. I mean, it's just as well he is somebody, really, because he'd still be a virgin. Otherwise, I'll Boris, wouldn't he? To be fair. Oh, my God, the man. He's the right article. Come on. To the House of Commons. And when presented with the inevitability of a right. recall petition, he didn't seek to defend himself or fight for his seat in Uxbridge and Ryslip. He, he left knew... the House of Commons yeah, altogether. Exactly. The political equivalent of taking your ball home. Yeah. And the man oh, yeah. ended his prime ministerial yes. career yes. in pathetic disgrace. Well, he did, yeah. So abject, the... abject, yeah. Well, to be fair, um, I think his parliamentary career was sort of abject disgrace to start, from start to finish, wasn't it really, darlings? It was much better than the Mayor of London. Now, if he'd like to come back and take on Siddiqui Khan, I'm all for that. Yes, because I think Boris, through all his faults, he is where he is. He's sort of like, uh, he was punching above his weight trying to be Prime Minister. But it was an Eton boy thing he'd always predicted he was going to be and this, that and the other, so whatever. But where he did really meet his, his uh, zenith was uh, when he was the Mayor of London. And I think if they put Boris up against Sadiqi Khan, yeah, they would have some problems, my darlings. Yes, they would. Well, no, they wouldn't. Sadiqi Khan would. That would be interesting. It would like me putting two ferrets in a sack and tie him sack up, wouldn't it, darlings? Anyway, I'm bored of this subject already. I've said too much. Probably going to have to avoid tunnels. And London, really. Yes. Oh, well, that's me skin from now on then. Bye-bye.